Do you want to know what's the only thing that has helped me go from waking up at 12 p.m. to 7 a.m.? Play video games. I wake up and the first thing I do is play Call of Duty. Before you sue me, let me explain. <laughs> you see, Bestie, I'm sure we're tired of choosing between waking up early then feeling like a zombie the rest of the day or waking up late and feeling unproductive the rest of the day. There was a few months last year where I was really burnt out, so I was struggling to wake up early. So in this video, Vesti, I will share with you all my no BS, realistic tips and advice on how to make waking up earlier that bit easier. Pay closer attention to the third tip because we'll discuss important questions that you need to ask yourself to craft a morning routine that's not only ideal but enjoyable for you. And the last tip is a game changer. And I want to say thank you for making Fae Films Academy number 2 in the world just hours after launching. It's a free community that I just launched. Here's everything that we do and I can't wait to see you inside. Alright, let's go. If you're addicted to your phone, I want you to set an alarm at the time you want to wake up, then play with your phone straight away. What? Yes, use your phone. We all know that having a morning routine that we enjoy is the most important factor in being able to wake up early consistently. Trust me, I've tried the whole exercising right when I wake up, but I just couldn't stick to it because it was too big of a change. So if scrolling on Instagram is something that you genuinely enjoy doing, then do it right when you wake up. Let's just say you need to get out of bed at 9am. Set your alarm a little bit earlier than usual, then just use your phone until you're ready to get out of bed. And personally, I find this better than actually waking up at 9am, using my phone until 10 and then feeling horrible about it the rest of the day. At this stage, try not to think too much about what you think a proper morning routine should look like. What works for one person might not work for the next and that's okay. The key is to find out what genuinely motivates you to get out of bed even if it goes against what's conventional. I'll actually be posting a vlog of my morning routine so that you can see how I implement all these tips. Of course, our aim is to replace this habit with something healthier in the future like stretching, journaling, or making coffee. But we all have to start somewhere and it's just not realistic to go from rotting in bed all morning to meditating in just one day. Also, try to eat a breakfast that doesn't make you tired after. Feel free to screenshot this bestie, but here are a list of foods you want to try to avoid eating for breakfast because they can cause a rapid spike in your blood sugar, then a drop, which can make you feel tired afterwards. I started this habit of using my phone right when I wake up for about 2-3 to three months. Then once I actually formed the habit of waking up at the same time every day, that's when I transitioned into reading because using my phone just wasn't good for my eyes. It's really just all about the little things you look forward to doing in the morning that helps you get out of bed. Comment down below what is something that you look forward to doing right when you wake up so hopefully we can get some inspiration from each other. And in the third tip, I'll explain how you can craft your perfect morning routine. Next, set triggers to wake you up. What are triggers? A trigger is a stimulus that elicits a reaction. For example, it's similar to how we feel like peeing when we enter the bathroom or how we feel hungry when we go to the kitchen. And these are just a few examples of how certain environments or cues can trigger specific responses in us. And so I realized that we can create triggers to make waking up easier and more natural. Here are a few examples of triggers that you can try. Set specific alarm sounds. Using a unique alarm sound can act as an auditory trigger. This alarm should only be used for waking up. Play around a little bit, maybe you prefer something more gentle and peaceful. Judas, Judas. <laughs> you can also use light as a trigger. Our body clock, aka our circadian rhythm, is highly responsive to light. I love to open one or two curtains in my bedroom at night before I go to sleep because the sunlight streaming in in the morning wakes me up naturally at about 7-8 am. You can also try those sunrise alarm clocks that slowly brighten up the room and I'll leave some famous ones in the description box below. If you're a heavy sleeper, then tactile triggers are something you should definitely try. For example, you can try wearing smartwatches when you go to sleep because when the alarm rings, it actually vibrates. My boyfriend has literally slept through an earthquake before and the only thing that wakes him up is his Apple Watch vibrating in the morning. But my favourite way to wake up is actually a little bit unique, it's by using scent. 
My parents had these specific perfumes and colognes that they would spray every time before they go to work. And I knew as a kid that when I smelt those perfumes, it was time to get up and get ready to go to school. I now understand that our sense of smell is actually closely linked to our brain's limbic system, which means it influences emotions and memories. So introducing scents as a wake-up trigger can be really effective, similar to how some of us use essential oils to fall asleep at night. Recently, I've actually been trying to recreate that experience I had in childhood. So for the past six months, I've actually been searching for my own signature scent, one that can wake me up in the morning like my parents once did. If you're curious, currently I'm using Chandelier by Fake Fragrance. It actually smells exactly like Mason's Baccarat Rouge 540, the one that's really viral on TikTok right Right now. If you want to twin with me, then I'll leave a link to this perfume in the description box below. It smells very sweet and sexy and sophisticated. Basically, Fake Fragrance sent me a PR package last month and I asked them why are they called Fake Fragrance. They said it's because they specialize in recreating iconic luxury fragrances but without the hefty price tag. So my perfume costs $30 which is an amazing deal compared to the Mason one and it smells basically the exact same. And if you like masculine scents, I'll write the names of my boyfriend's favorites in the description box below. So if you're interested in any perfume, I actually recommend that you try going to Fake Fragrances website first to see if they've already created a replica of your expensive perfume. You can get an extra 20% off and free shipping if you use the link in my description box below. Next, ask yourself these questions. Here's the thing, we all have those ideal morning routines that we really want to achieve like working out and meditating but it always doesn't go to plan because it's just too complicated. The reason why our Pilates princess dreams just don't manifest into reality is because we don't have realistic expectations of what we want and how we're going to achieve it. So I want you to ask yourself these questions. What exactly do I want to accomplish in the morning? It's a simple question but it's what most people struggle with. Do you want to feel refreshed, energized, relaxed? We keep saying we want to work out, but be specific. Do you want a 5-minute stretching routine or a 5km run? Second question, how am I going to achieve this when I wake up? This is all about preparing those little things so that when you wake up, you're all ready to start. In my previous video, I explained how putting your space to sleep is essential for a good start to your day. That takes around 10 minutes. Just add another 5 minutes to prepare the little things you need for your morning routine and those 15 minutes will drastically change how your morning is and how productive you are the rest of the day. The lesser the amount of decisions you need to make in the morning, the better. For me, my emotional support water bottle is beside me ready to drink, my favorite book is close by so I can finish another chapter when I wake up. Final question, how am I going to maintain this routine? This is where you can add your personal touch to your morning routine. Maybe you want to listen to an episode of your favorite podcast while you exercise, or maybe play songs from your favorite singer while you do your skincare. Answering these questions has really helped me create a morning routine that's not only ideal, but also realistic and enjoyable for me. And I hope it helps you too. Next, you need to do everything earlier. For the first few weeks that I tried waking up earlier, I knew in my mind that I had to sleep earlier. But I still ended up sleeping at 1-2am no matter how hard I tried. I don't know why it took me so long to realize this, but you can't just sleep earlier. You have to shift everything earlier. Eat dinner earlier, exercise earlier, shower earlier. You have to rearrange your entire day. Also, be mindful of your sleeping habits. Experts recommend that adults should sleep an average of 7 to 9 hours each night. But determine how many hours you actually need. Personally, I need 6 hours to be functional and 8 hours to be happy. Anything more than 9 hours, I'll just feel groggy the entire day. Weirdly. And here's why you can't just sleep more to replace the hours you lost. Sleep dead. Also known as sleep deficit. When you sleep fewer hours than what your body actually needs, you have sleep dead. Sleep debt adds up over time, so let's just say you need 8 hours of sleep to be functional. If you only sleep for 6 hours every night, you lose 2 hours of sleep every night. By Saturday, you'll already have a sleep debt of 10 hours. Even if you sleep in on Saturday and you get 4 more hours of sleep than usual, you're still 6 hours short. 
The worst part is that a lot of us spend more than just 5 days sleeping less than we need. So there comes a point where we just can't sleep extra anymore to replace the hours lost. Feel free to screenshot this but here's how you know if you have sleep debt, if you experience any of these things. It took me 2-3 to three months of sleeping enough to actually get rid of all those symptoms. But how do you know how much sleep your body actually needs? Here's how. Take note of what time you feel sleepy. Don't set an alarm, just see what time your body naturally wakes up and how many hours you slept. Try this for a few days. Over time, you'll know how many hours you actually need to sleep. I found that the first few days weren't really accurate because I slept a lot more than I actually needed to since I had a lot of sleep then. I found out that if you go to sleep at the appropriate time, you don't need an alarm to wake up. An advertisement will actually play in the next few seconds, so if you want to support this channel, please don't skip the ad. Thank you! And finally, here's a powerful tip that most people don't even consider. Tell people you're a morning person. If people see you as a responsible person that wakes up early and is super productive, then you're more likely to take up or continue habits that contribute to that identity because you want to live up to their expectations. This principle also applies to negative aspects. Let's just say you tell people that you're lazy and that you wake up late every day. You might find yourself accidentally sticking to these habits because they've become a part of your self-image and weirdly, even though it really shouldn't, it might feel a little bit awkward or embarrassing to change. I remember back in high school when I used to have bad grades that I would hide myself from studying in front of my friends because I thought it was embarrassing to take my academics so seriously. Essentially, to a certain extent, you become what others think of you. If you let people think you're lazy, then you're more likely to stay lazy. But if you let people think you're put together, you're more likely to get your life on track. Remember in my How To Be That Girl video, I talked about how to turn your disadvantages into your advantages. So even though obsessing over other people's opinions about you isn't good at all, you can use that to your advantage by letting their positive views about you inspire you and motivate you to do better. If people see you as a morning person or anything that you want to become Vesti, just embrace that image and push yourself to really become that. If you've made it this far, comment down below what time you usually wake up and what you want to change that to. Remember to like this video, subscribe and turn on the notification bell and set it to all so you don't miss out on any future uploads. Thank you for 1 million and 100,000 subscribers and I'll see you all in my next video bestie. Bye!